JKB back with another episode. Today in the show, I'm reviewing Sir Lovelot. Thank you so much to the dev for sending over the review copy. Sir Lovelot is a platformer where it's your job to get to the end of the level as quick as possible while on the way getting some collectibles and avoiding a bunch of enemies and traps. Right off the bat, I'll say this is a very, very difficult game. It's one of those platformers that is designed to have a cycle. So you'll go through the level and you'll discover all the traps and all of the enemies. You'll probably die a million times and you have to learn the pattern of that level. Once you've figured that out, you can get through these levels much quicker. So if you were hoping for a slower paced platformer, you're not going to get that here. This is definitely one of the games that I want those people out there that have that need to get better and better at a game. So there's some people out there that just like to play games for fun. There are some people out there that like to challenge themselves, and this is definitely one of those games. I should also say speedrunners will have a blast with this game. The main objective of the game is to sleep with a princess. And yes, some people out there are going to be offended, and I can't wait. I hope it hurts because it's just a video game, but Sir Lovelot wants to wants to fall in love. So he, he finds these items in the level, which can be everything from flowers to rings, and you have to collect more and more of it to get into the princess's castle by the end of the level. There's also a bunch of secret items you can collect on the way to get more of a you know, the completionist vibe here. If you want to really go down that route with a game like this, that's probably the main objective of somebody buying this game. Now, in saying that, yes, again, I'll just go over this. He goes to these castles and there's a cheeky little joke in there where he turns the lights off after you deliver the item. And the next morning, the princess is pissed off and kicks him out. So he's got to go to another castle to sleep with another princess. If you've played games like Celeste and Super Meat Boy, you'll be right at home with the platforming in this game. You have double jump abilities, a dash ability, you have this little gun that can take out enemies from a distance, and as you get further into the levels, like I said, you have to collect more items, so the levels become more difficult because you do a little backtracking over like spikes and, and saw blades and enemies and, you know, all of the the difficult things in this game that you have overcome, you'll have to overcome them again in some of these levels. So you'll learn certain paths, how to get back and get to the castle. And that really, I mean, to be honest, is the whole game. That's why you play a game like this, just to do the platforming. So overall, I'll just get to what I love about the game. The fact that it knows what it wanted to be. It's designed by a developer who understands what these platformers are supposed to be. He's obviously taking some sort of inspiration from Celeste and Super Meat Boy. And he stands apart with his own unique art design. And the music is also very, very good. The only negative I could say on the Nintendo Switch version of the game, which is the version I am reviewing right now, is that it does have screen tearing issues that hopefully will be patched out on day one release. So other than the screen tearing, I can't really say anything's negative about the game. I do feel like it's going to offend some people because he's just sleeping with princesses, but I don't give a shit. I think it's great. Man, if you're offended by that, time to go outside and eat a donut. I'm going to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10, and I'll see you in the next episode of JKB.